New York City is considered its very own wonderland, and now it's getting a taste of the original story at the Morgan Library and Museum. Alice 150 Years of Wonderland looks at the evolution of Lewis Carroll's classic tale through original drawings and letters, rare editions, vintage photographs, and film. This is the first time in 30 years that the original manuscript will travel from the British Library to New York, in honor of its first publication in 1865. It's joined by the Morgan's own extensive collection of drawings and colored proofs done by Carroll. This exhibition um, tells the story of how Alice in Wonderland came to be, starting from the very first day when it was first told totally spontaneously, how it was written down into a manuscript, and then finally published in the book that we know today. Before it became a literary classic, Alice in Wonderland started out as a fun afternoon story. Lewis Carroll told the story to Alice Little and her two sisters on a boating trip on the Thames River. Fascinated by the enchanting tale, Alice begged Carol for a written copy, and the rest is history. Here we have the real Alice, Alice Little, the um, girl who, for whom the story was first told. While Alice's character in the book is different from the real Alice, Carol infused his muse into the written copy. So he cut out another print of this photograph and pasted it over his drawing. That's how he presented it to Alice, and she had the manuscript for most of her life and never knew that there was a drawing of her underneath. This was only discovered in the 1970s. First, Carolyn shows me where it all began, Carol's gift to Alice. So this is the original manuscript of Alice's Adventures, um, which you can see is uh, written out and illustrated by Lewis Carroll himself. Um, and it's, it's illustrated throughout with 37 of his own pen and ink drawings. And what lovely handwriting Mr. Carroll had. It's, it's beautiful. And, and this is a presentation manuscript, so it was made as a gift, which is um, one reason why his handwriting is so perfect here. While the book was a hit for Alice, it didn't survive its first publication. Carroll published it, but soon recalled it after the illustrator expressed his unhappiness with the drawings. Little did they know, it was the beginning of the literary adventure. So this is a copy of the very, very scarce first printing of the book. There are only about 20 copies of this that survive. When Carroll decided to republish the book, he commissioned one of the most important illustrators of the day, John Tenniel, to bring his magical characters to life. And, and what we're looking at here is Tenniel's original drawing of the White Rabbit, together with some sketches of Alice um, in the margin as well, and some pen trials here. have the original drawing of um, the Mad Tea Party, which we have Alice, and the Mad Hatter, and the March Hare, and the Dormouse. We can see how this changes into the original hand-colored proof again. While Carroll was imaginative in his story creation, he possessed the same quality when it came to gaining readership. He licensed his characters to appear on everyday items, which was a new concept in the 19th century. So we have here this uh, Wonderland postage stamp case, which is a sort of novelty that he created um, with the Alice characters, um, and this biscuit tin behind as well. Carol's enchanted tale appeared on more than just stamps and biscuit tins. It eventually made its way to the big screen. This is the first film adaptation. It's from 1903, so just five years after Carol's death. And one of the most interesting things about this film is that the directors sort of take liberties with the, with the storyline, um, but they're really conscious about trying to reenact uh, Tenniel's original drawings. Not everybody has necessarily even read the, the book. They come to it through Disney or through some other adaptations. So wanting to get closer to this story and you know, learning about its development and how it you know, has such cultural relevance still today. While Alice may be 150 years old, she does not look it, and she's not gonna look it when we take a selfie together. Lots of museums are integrating this into their exhibitions, and so, Alice, here we go. Oh yeah, I think we would definitely be friends 150 years ago. That's going on Instagram.
Whether you're checking out the exhibition on screen or you're doing it in the classic book, it just goes to show that childhood and creativity never go out of style. Reporting from New York, I'm Christy Clements.